good evening everyone i hope i am audible to you all can we start you can also just interact with me just by unmuting yourself or just typing in the chat box i think is fine so today we are going to discuss i'm going to discuss about regulation of bacterial gene expression uh, which is also a lac operon we'll uh, specifically uh, discuss about lac operon in detail so this is the outline of my class to for today so at the end of this video you will be able to answer what is operon and what is the inducible and repressible uh, systems in the operons and what is positive control and what is negative control and why the prokaryotic gene are transcribed as polycystonic mrna and lastly we will discuss uh, we will get to know whether the lac operon is a positively controlled or negatively controlled system so before going to the regulation i have told you like the prokaryotes usually have this rna polymerase which will go and bind to this promoter region is this region and from there it will just pass through the gene where it will synthesize the mrna from the information that is transcribed to mrna the translation process will takes place then the protein product will come and that will act on the act maybe as a enzymes for certain metabolism this is how the gene expression takes place so we'll talk about regulation now for for example any bacterial gene or any bacteria or any organisms contains thousands of gene we know it like in that thousands of genes there are certain genes which will which should be expressed all the time at the concentrate that that means that they have the function in a body in a such a way that they should be expressed like uh, at all the time for the complete lifetime those type of genes are categorized as housekeeping genes the genes which will be expressed at all the time at a constant rate throughout the lifetime they are called as housekeeping genes and the term for it is the term for the expression is is constitutive expression you can write it as constitutive expression if certain gene is expressing at all the time then we can call the expression as constitutive expression so the genes which are expressing in this way constitutively they are called as housekeeping genes since they are expressing at all the time you need not to do any regulation regulation means like controlling the ability of a uh, gene to express you need not to control anything that means you need not to regulate it uh for the genes which are needed to be expressed at all the time the, so the regulation will only come when consider if you have a genes like in a body there is there are some genes which are not required at all the time which are only required at specific time at specific stage of the life what if they will get expressed at all the time throughout their life what what loss there will be to the body the major loss will be the wastage of energy so the wastage of energy may be in terms of uh, uh, sugar source where most of the bacteria or prokaryotes will derive the energy source from the sugar which is mainly by the glucose or some other disaccharides also so they will waste their energy from which they will lose the resources and they cannot multiply themselves that is why the regulation of such genes are required where if it is required at specific stage it should be expressed at that specific stage only at all other stages it should be regulated or controlled so that the expression won't happen even though the genes is present inside the cell this is why the regulation is regulation is very important for us so uh, before going into the gene regulation of prokaryotes and eukaryotes like prokaryotes we'll discuss some major difference between prokaryotic gene regulation and eukaryotic gene regulation so the regulation during uh, in the prokaryotes the regulation is mainly during transcriptional level it is very prominent like most prominent prominent and uh, the regulation in the eukaryotes may might be at like a transcription level or, or post transcription level there are two major levels of regulation or control in eukaryotes one is transcription level and second one is post transcription level this post transcription level includes during the rna processing that means that regulation can happen also during rna processing during the rna transfer we know that in a cell the the mrna is synthesized in the nucleus where it should go to the ribosomes for the protein synthesis so during transport there can be a regulation also during translation or after translation the post translation modification can also happen in the proteins which can control the ability of the protein to function this is how the regulation or control can happen in eukaryotes 
but why it is only during transcription level in the prokaryotes why it is so why it is not under translation level why translation won't happen in prokaryotes it also happens in the prokaryotes proteins will also get synthesized in the prokaryotes but why it is most prominent at transcription level why do you think it is most prominent at this level only so the transcription level the regulation in the prokaryotes is only at the transcription level why because the gene expression in case of prokaryotes it is translational like transcription coupled translation mediated that is transcription and translation will happen in one go there is no as such gap between transcription and translation in as in case of eukaryotes eukaryotes there is a gap between transcription and translation and also after transcription there is a 3 dash polyadenylation and 5 dash capping all the editing RNA editing will takes place the RNA modification will takes place the intron should be spliced all things will come under RNA processing this will be done in the eukaryotes that is why there is as such gap between transcription and translation when we consider eukaryotes but for prokaryotes since there is there are no process process of this processing in the RNA for prokaryotes you can only control the gene expression at transcription level you cannot do it under translation level okay uh, this is about the basic difference in the gene regulation for prokaryotes and eukaryotes so next about we'll talk about the transcription regulation in case of prokaryotes so the regulation or the controlling of gene expression is mainly by the regulatory proteins that are present in the cell within the same dna so this regulatory proteins are of two different types one is called as activators and second one is called as repressors so these are the nothing but a regulatory proteins which will just activate or repress the gene expression okay so this is in case of prokaryotes so we'll talk about the function of this activators first so what these activators will do it will just bind to the promoter region and it will increase the rate of transcription so we'll discuss in detail how this increase in the rate of transcription will take place with the help of activators later okay and it is called as positive regulation why it is positive regulation consider you have certain regulatory protein inside the cell if certain regulatory protein is present if it is acting in such a way that it is increasing the gene expression then you can call it as positive control that means it is positively controlling the expression that is increasing the expression that is why we are calling it as positive control so in case of repressors what they will do they have the binding site at operator region and it will prevent the transcription so now consider any repressor molecule or any protein that is present inside the cell if it is acting in such a way that it it won't allow the gene expression then what type of regulation it is it is called as it can be called as negative regulation right because it is negatively regulating the expression it is not allowing the genes to express that is why this type of expression is called as negative expression so i can show it uh, diagrammatically where this is a ds dna like double standard dna these are the genes that are present here and this is the operator region and this is the promoter region and this is the like uh, behind the promoter side there will be uh, activator binding sites that means like activators generally bind near the promoter sites like upstream of promoter sites the activators will bind so if you consider this is the activator it can go and bind at this site if you consider this as a repressor it will go and bind to the operator site so we'll discuss in detail what happens when these activators and repressors will go and bind to the double stranded dna okay so we'll talk about the regulatory mechanisms how it is actually regulating as i told you earlier the activators generally bind to the promoter region and this will what they will do they will bring some conformational changes at these promoter sites of ds dna if you consider this is the ds double standard dna if certain activators are just binded to this dna at the promoter region it will bring some conformational changes at the promoter sites which will help this rna polymerase to go and bind to the promoter region okay it will help it will help this rna polymerase to come and bind to this promoter region 
So what what the activator will generally do, it will go and bind to the promoter region first, and they will bring some conformational changes in the structure of DNA, so that it will be compatible with uh, binding with RNA polymerase later. It is done by the activators later to which RNA polymerase can go and bind to it easily. So once the RNA polymerase will come and bind to this promoter region, then the transcription can take place and genes will be synthesized. This is why it is called as positive control. Because it is positively controlling the expression, the transcription is switched on right now in the presence of activators. So now talking about repressors, it will just bind to the operator region. The major difference between the activators and the repressor are like uh, activators generally bind near the promoter region, and but the operators like uh, repressors will bind to this operator region. Okay, this is a major difference which you should take care of. Okay, you should remember this. So next, what uh, once it binds to the operator region, it will blocks the expression of the transcription. How it will block the expression? I'll just show it diagrammatically. Wait. If you consider this is again the double standard DNA, and this is the operator region, promoter region, and also these are the genes. So if there is a repressor in the vicinity of uh, DNA in a cell, so it will go and bind to this site because operator is, is its binding site. So this is repressor. Once the repressor has binded to this operator region, we know that RNA polymerase will come and bind to this promoter, right? For effective gene expression. So once this uh, repressor will go and bind to this operator region, it will again bring some changes in the structure of DNA making it not compatible for the RNA polymerase to come and bind with promoter. If the operator has uh, operator region is binded with the repressor, the RNA polymerase cannot come and bind to the promoter region because it will also bring some changes in the structure of DNA. So this is one case. And the other case, what it can also do is, even if the RNA polymerase can come and bind to this promoter region, it cannot bypass this region operator region why because repressor is present which will act as a block between promoter and operator so this rna polymerase cannot bypass this uh, operator region hence it cannot synthesize the genes like synthesize the mrna from the genes like it cannot encode or transcript transcribe from here this is why it is called as negative control where the presence of this repressor in the cells will switch off this transcription or the transcription it won't allow the transcription to take place that is why it is called as negative control so there are three different scenarios here where you just you can just answer me with one by one what happens in a for a dna if this is a double standard dna which has his own promoter operator and the genes after it what happens in the absence of repressors and activators whether the genes will be transcribed or not in the first case if we consider this is the first case, if there are there is an absence of repressor and the activators, you have promoter, operator, and the genes after the operator regions, and you also have the RNA polymerase required for the transcription, whether the transcription will take place or not. Yes, it will easily take place without any uh, blocks here because the again repressor is not present. It will go and bind to this promoter region and it will just transcribe the whole length of a DNA and it will synthesize the gene, like uh, synthesize the uh, mRNA. So this is called as basal level of expression. We call it as basal level of expression when there is no activators or promote, like uh, activators or repressors. What if there is a presence, there is a presence of repressor in the cell? If this is a promoter operator again the same stretch of DNA stretch of gene this is the double standard DNA and we have RNA polymerase again but along with it we have repressor protein so as we discussed earlier if the repressor protein is present it will go and block this operator site so that the transcription will not take place and this is called as below the basal level of expression so next thing what if the presence of activators so if the activator is present we know that it brings some changes in the promoter region 
and will make it comfortable for the RNA polymerase to go and bind to it and the genes will get expressed. So this is called as above the basal level of expression. We'll talk about the operon model. So whatever I have explained till now, to explain it in a better way, the operon model was bought from by the Francis Jacob and the Jacobs Monad. And for the same, they got a Nobel Prize in 1965. Okay, so the operon models, what it does is it explains like how the gene regulation occurs at the level of transcription in the bacteria. The operon models, they will explain us how actually does this gene regulation will occur at the level of transcription in the bacteria. So till now, I have just said superficially without naming any of the genes or any of the repressors or any of the activators. But these two scientists bought up with a certain model with actual genes and also actual activators and the repressors to explain how it actually goes in a cell in a bacterial cell so before going further we need we have to know like what is operon so what the operon means like operon is nothing but the sequence of adjacent genes which will include the structural genes promoter genes cis acting regulatory sequences which will uh, produce this regulatory proteins and also the operator region all this like uh, operon includes all these things along with the genes which are under all the under the transcriptional control this is what that operon means it's nothing but just a sequence of dna with the genes pre present in it also with the structural promoter structural genes promoter cis acting regulatory sequences and the operator regions this is what uh, operon mean okay so based on the functions of a gene they are actually divided into two different types one is structural gene and second one is regulatory gene so what do you understand by what are structural genes how do you define the structural genes see the structural genes are nothing but the uh, dna sequences give me a second okay the Structural genes are nothing but they are DNA sequences which will code for a protein or most of the RNAs. These are the genes which will code for the proteins or the enzymes or the RNAs. So what about the regulatory genes? So the regulatory genes are also proteins, but these proteins are used to control the expression of the structural genes. Okay, so we'll talk in this way. If this is a DNA, if this is a structural gene, if it get expressed and used as the protein product, this protein will be used in a breakdown catabolic path or anabolic pathway or any other metabolism. So this is about structural genes. In case of regulatory genes, this will again give a protein product, but this protein product is used in turn with the expression of the structural gene. It is involved in the expression of the structural genes. Whatever protein product that will come from the regulatory genes is used in the expression of structural genes, which has some function. So this protein will go and help in, help in the expression of the structural genes, which has some functions in the expression of the structural genes. That is why they are called as the regulatory genes, where they have the function of regulating the other genes. That is what I have written here, the proteins that control the expression of the structural genes. So we'll take two different examples to understand uh, two different uh, important terms. One is inducible system and another one is repressible systems. So as we discussed earlier, not all proteins are synthesized, like synthesized by bacteria or required for all the times. We, we have discussed this earlier that we don't, uh, like bacteria doesn't require all the proteins that, uh, at all the times. So you consider one case, if, if there is a sugar, okay, in a cell, if this is a cell, it contains certain sugar, uh, maybe disaccharide. If so, in order to, in order to get a energy by the cell, this disaccharide should be converted into monosaccharide, right? Only the simple sugar, from the simple sugar, the bacteria can derive the energy. Right. So conversion of the disaccharide to monosaccharides, what it will require? It will require certain enzymes to break down, so to break down the disaccharide to monosaccharides. So what I mean to say is, if this disaccharide is present in the cell, 
so whether uh, do they require the enzymes or not they require the enzymes right they require the enzymes to break down so how the enzymes will come the enzymes will come from gene expression like if the genes get synthesized then only the enzymes will come so can i say this as an inducible system because in only in the presence of the sugar the genes should be expressed right like enzyme should be expressed if i have a case where in the cell there are no sugar present do do i require the enzymes to be synthesized whether i should i require this uh, enzymes to be synthesized in the absence of the sugar sugar or any molecule which will break down it no right so only in case like only in case of presence of sugars the enzymes are required or gene expression itself is required so that is why the system is called as inducible system where the breakdown of we can take the example of sugars where the enzymes are only required when the sugars are present in the cell for the catabolic pathway what is catabolic pathway that that is just the breakdown of sugar so when we take take a example of lactose in a cell the lactose is present so if the lactose is present in a cell uh, the bacteria can only derive the energy if the lactose is converted into glucose right only if it is break down into glucose it can get derive the energy from the glucose so in order to break down this lactose what are the enzymes that are required like uh, lactose metabolism generally required three different enzymes one is these are the three different enzymes which are required for the lactose catabolism so in the presence of this lactose this uh, enzymes are required and the gene expression should takes place and it should break down the lactose into glucose right so this system can be called as inducible system where only in the presence of lactose the gene will get expressed and we will get the enzymes which are the these are the three different enzymes and this is synthesized by lac z gene and this is by lac y and this is by lac k gene so here i'm just trying i was just trying to say you that like lactose metabolisms the required enzymes are beta galactosidase permease permease trans acetylase they are actually required to break down the lactose into glucose and galactose where the glucose is used as a source of energy for the bacteria so since the lactose is acting as uh, inducible that is it is making the genes to express to give the genes like uh, to give the enzymes the system is called as inducible systems so the best the best studied inducible okay the best studied inducible system is catabolic degradation of disaccharide that is lactose in e coli and this is popularly called as lac operon this is the best studied inducible system in a bacteria okay and this was by jacob and monad so we have like two different types of regulation for this lac operon which we are going to discuss it further so the negative negative regulation is by the regu uh, regulatory protein that is lac repressor and the positive regulation is by cmp mediated receptor protein so in today's video we are going to discuss in detail about negative regulation so i hope like you have understood why the lac operon it is called as inducible system right so next we will talk about another case where it is about uh, anabolic or synthetic pathway so if you consider a cell where certain substance is required for deriving the energy okay for energy derivation so this substance take it as glucose only you need glucose for energy derivation so do you need the enzymes for the synthesis of the glucose right if there is no glucose present in the cell then you need some enzymes that will synthesize this glucose in order to make this bacteria to survive so this is the one case what if the cell as already have this glucose in abundant whether this cell requires the enzymes to be synthesized or simply whether the gene expression is required or not in second case 
what in what is in first case what if in first case whether it is required or not gene expression when the glucose is not present whether gene expression for the synthesis of glucose is required or not yes it is required in first case if it is uh, if the glucose is already present in abundant in the cells then it won't require this gene expression of which will synthesize again the glucose so the gene expression is not required in second case this is what is explained in catabolic or synthetic pathway synthetic pathway or, uh, anabolic sorry anabolic pathway which means like the process where it will synthesize a new compound so genes are expressed to produce a substance only if there is no supply so genes should be expressed only when there is no supply of genes for those things where it is synthetic or anabolic pathway so the example for this is a uh, tryptophan amino acids okay and it is coded by the five structural gene that is from alphabet e to a so this tryptophan enzymes are required for the conversion of this chrom chromic acid to tryptophan so what i mean to say is if cell doesn't have this tryptophan operon like tryptophan then if there is a dna it will express and give five different enzymes so this five different enzymes it will just convert this chromic acid into tryptophan with the help of this enzymes so now we have this tryptophan in the cell so this is a biosynthesis like this is the synthetic pathway where the tryptophan synthesis is taking place when it is taking place only when the tryptophan is not present in the cell so can we call it as so now can we call it as a repressible system why repressible to system why because if the tryptophan is present in the cell whether it will allow the gene expression to take place or not why it will give the like why it will do this gene expression even after like even if this uh, tryptophan is present if it is already present whether it will give you make the genes express or not it will allow the gene expression or not whether it is required like gene expression is required the enzymes for the biosynthesis like synthesis of this tryptophan is required even in the presence of tryptophan it is not required right so this tryptophan what it is doing it is repressing the the operon the presence of tryptophan is actually making the transcription to switch off like transcription not to happen so that is why it is uh, it can it is called as repressible system so in your jrf exams there is one direct questions regarding this one they will ask you lactose is a repressible system or inducible system tryptophan is repressible system or inducible system whether it is positively regulated or negatively regulated these are the three to four type of questions which you will come across which is very usual or very general that they will ask you regarding in the topic of regulation of gene action this is a basic question which you will get it from there okay so you need to understand because see while reading you will definitely get why it is repressible why it, which is repressible and which is inducible and why it is so but you need to revise it regularly and you need to understand it first to uh, memorize it okay to remember it you should understand why it is repressible and why it is inducible so we i have made a four different tables where all four different cases are present here in the first case one first is positively inducible positive inducible system second one is negative inducible system third one is positive repressible and fourth one is negative repressible i will just explain each one for you so if this is a dna i told you what is inducible means okay so the positive inducible means that if there is certain substance which is actually making gene to be synthesized if there is certain substance you can call it as inducer it is making the gene expression that is why it is inducible so why it is positive there there are some regulatory protein which is called as a activator which we discussed earlier this is activator is enhancing the expression of this particular operon that is why it is called as positive inducible so the example for this is CAMP mediated regulatory protein. So this is the name of the activator. Okay, and again, this is of lac operon only. Don't get confused. So I, I told you earlier that lac operon can be both positively and negatively regulated. One second. So lac operon 
okay we'll show it to you in this way okay here i showed you earlier that lack of ron it is positively regulated by the cmp receptor protein we can call it as activator and also by the negative regulation by lac repressor it is called as repressor so if they ask you in the exam whether the lac operon is positively regulated or negatively what it, what you will say it is both positively and negatively regulated but it is of inducible type not of repressible type it is both the lack uh, both the cases lac operon is inducible type but it can be also positively regulated and also negatively regulated negative regulation is by lac i gene that is by the repressor protein so this is the first case i hope like you have clearly understood the second case i will show you if this is p o and the genes are z y a we have black color is repressor and this pink color is lactose this is lactose and this is repressor i told you earlier what is the function of this repressor repressor will go and bind to this operator region and it will block the synthesis what if is lactose is present in the cell i told you if the lactose is present in the cell this synthesis will takes place why because this enzymes are required to break down this lactose so we will discuss how this lactose will make this repressor inactive and this transcription will be switched on okay this is the second example where it is again the example for the second type of system is again lac operon but mediated by lac repressor here also it is lac operon but mediated by camp regulatory protein so third one we have positive regulation we don't have as such example for this type of system and fourth one is negative repressible which we discussed earlier that it is the example is tryptophan operon so i can just tell you why it is repressible i told you earlier like why it is repressible because in the presence of tryptophan the transcription will not take place that is why it is repressible because that uh, tryptophan is just repressing the gene expression then why it is called negative control it has the repressor along with this tryptophan which will just switch off this operon by default even if the tryptophan is not present the repressor will go and bind to this operator region and it will switch off okay this is about four different types of systems and examples for three different types and one which has doesn't have any example so this we will discuss about lac repressor that is negative control like negative inducible control so lac operon mediated by lac repressor so in this case just tell me what happens if the lac i gene is present like it is expressed so consider here this this part is about lac i gene okay don't get confused and this is a part of lac operon in most of the cases this lac i gene is present upstream of this promoter region uh, that is why i have written it here in the same strand of ds dna okay so here this lac i gene will get synthesized it will get converted into mrna where the after translation the protein product will come which is called as repressor so once the repressor is synthesized it will go and bind to the operator region by which this rna polymerase cannot bypass this operator region so by default it will be switched off like transcription cannot takes place the operon is switched off this is what it is okay this rna polymerase cannot bypass the repressor that is why all the three genes cannot get expressed and operon will be switched off by default if there is a lac i gene within the operon so second case what if the lactose is present in the media along with lac repressor so consider there is a lac repressor the lac i gene is present within the like together with the operon but in addition to that we have this lactose in the cell so again that mrna synthesis will take place and then again the repressor protein will come and bind here once the repressor will come and bind uh, like a repressor is synthesized it can go and bind to this operator region okay but in case in the presence of this inducer which is a allo lactose okay so again there is one thing the most of people will get confused so the inducer itself is not lactose 
lactose is not actually a inducer the inducer is allo lactose but this allo lactose is from lactose only the lactose will get converted into allo lactose with the help of enzyme beta galactosidase so this allo lactose will act as the inducer where this inducer has a affinity to the repressor it will go and bind to this repressor and make this repressor like change the shape of this repressor so that it cannot go and bind to the operator region it will change the binding site of the repressor to the operator region so that this uh, repressor which is attached to this inducer which is allo lactose i written it as lactose it is allo lactose cannot go and bind to the operator region since it cannot go and bind to the operator region so the rna polymerase will normally come and bind to the promoter region so it can bypass this operator region and synthesis all the genes required so there will be a once a synth there is a synthesis of all the enzymes there can be a complete lactose catabolism there is no alt in the like uh, alt in the transcription process the transcription is switched on in the presence of lactose so the lactose will first generally convert into allo lactose with the enzymes beta galactosidase and this allo lactose will go and bind to the repressor which will just bring some changes in the structure of this repressor which will not allow this repressor to go and bind to the operator region so that like this rna polymerase will generally come and bind to the promoter region and this just bypass this operator region and will synthesize the all the three different genes this is how this is the complete explanation regarding the concept of lac operon how the regulation is actually taking place in the presence and the absence of lactose so this was about today's class i just wanted to discuss all these things so in the next class if you release uh, beta galactose injection okay <laughs> yeah this is a very good question like someone asked me beta galactosidase enzyme is synthesized after transcription but it is required before transcription for the formation of allo lactose okay this is very good question so I, this is why i discussed with you earlier regarding the basal level of expression so this is one important thing where even if the the absence of repressors and the active uh, activators or the inducers there will be a minimum or the basal level of expression okay the concentration will be very very minimum maybe in the 10 power minus like 10 power very minute level the concentration will be very minute so uh, once you add this once you add this lactose into the cell at very minute con uh, concentration there will be a beta galactosidase that will be present so it will go and just convert this lactose into allo lactose and this allo lactose will go and bind to this repressor region where it will enhance the rate of transcription from where that uh, lactose metabolism will catabolism will increase at the faster rate got it any other doubts nice that you have gone through all these things and you understood whatever i have discussed or maybe you have read already read these things before it's nice in the next class if you just register to our course we uh, we will be just discussing about lac operon which is mediated by cmp regulatory protein and also completely regarding tryptophan operon how it is negatively regulated by repressible system and also we will discuss about the mutational studies that has been taken place in the lac operon to know the nature of genes like whether they are dominant or recessive this was done by using the mirozygotes that we can discuss in detail in the upcoming classes so uh, we'll update you regarding the upcoming classes in the group uh, so be in the group for the further updates okay thank you thank you for attending